to an episode of Maker Writers Day. I took a short break or a long break depending on how you look at it. Uh, I have a lot on my plate that I've put there. Um, but anyway, welcome back and I hope you enjoy this new segment. In this segment, we will be talking about Legos, our foot's worst enemy, and then archery and some of the mechanics within the archery and I know a lot of fantasy writing has you know archery depicted so we'll touch on that a little bit and then for the writing advice portion we will be talking a little bit about romantic tension and how you can create that in your writing and create it believably all right so without further ado let's jump on in Welcome to segment number one, where we're going to talk about Legos. So, Legos are the absolute worst thing in the world for to be laid about on the floor. Have you ever stepped on a Lego? It is like being stabbed. <laughs> It's one of the worst things in the world. Oh my gosh, I cannot express that enough. My kids have Legos, but they don't play with Legos like, you know, you would see in the commercials. Because Let's face it, the commercials lie. There is no child in the world that is going to sit there and build, 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 build without scattering them about and <laughs> losing pieces and just going nuts with them. Um, the way my kids do it is they get like five or six and they stack them and they mix them and then the rest of them are lost to oblivion so that when I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and <laughs> walk through the living room for some weird reason, I don't know, maybe I'm hungry, maybe I'm thirsty. There's no telling because I'm a white sleeper. Anyway, my feet find those suckers in the floor and I am immediately awake. It is more sobering than a punch to the gut. I mean, it hurts so bad. And I wonder how many other parents or aunts, cousins, anybody has accidentally stepped on a Lego and is with me. I mean, come on, those things are awful. However, they do create some pretty neat looking things. I've seen people make like life-size statues that if you did not know that it was Legos, you mind blown. I mean, it's crazy. And then you've got those people who are so into TV shows and stuff like that that create the, the uh, spaceships or the little characters um houses is they this is a really creative outlet the only problem is if you don't contain the creativity it's painful all right well that's enough of my nonsense rant for today we're gonna go and move on into the did you know portion Here we are with the did you know portion and today's feature is going to be archery so not too long ago i posted a video on twitter and facebook of me out with my dad shooting our bows in the front yard at their house and in this video it depicts me with a traditional recurve of about i want to say 40 pounds 45 pounds it's not very heavy but it's not very light either um and by that I mean the draw tension the weight of the draw so with a bow you have the grip obviously and then you have the rest of the bow you're gonna hold it kind of loose you're gonna make sure this arm is straight you're gonna get sideways with your target you can either use three below, two below, one above, however it's comfortable to you. Just make sure that it gets into the crease of your finger, the, the very first knuckle. 
and then you're going to pull back and you're going to anchor the tip of that finger right about here or if you know depending on your hands or whatever it could be on your cheek i like the little notch right there between my jaw right between my teeth you're gonna pull you're gonna get your arrow tip right where you need it to be release because we don't shoot that is not a term used in archery it's release or loose um pray <laughs> that you aimed correctly the traditional bow is a hell of a lot harder to use than a compound bow which is another bow that i have and those are the mechanical bows that are a little bit sh shorter and they really look techy so with that one you do the exact same thing but one of the difference is one of the differences excuse me is that it's got these little wheels on either end so when you pull the string out it, it it loosens some of that tension loosens some of that tension for you so you're not having to hold it as hard because with me i try to draw back and aim as quickly as i can because my arms are kind of weak and I start to shake. And the more you shake with the bow, whew, your arrows are going everywhere. So I suggest that if you're getting into archery or you really like archery, find a range that you can go to and just, you know, get a feel for everything. Make sure that they teach you the mechanics of how to put the arrow and stuff on because some people think it's super easy which it is kind of super easy once you get the hang of it but when you first start out you have no idea what you're doing it's it's better to get someone to kind of show you a little bit and I really wish that I had a bow here to um, demonstrate but what I'm gonna do for you is I'm going to put in a video that the one I mentioned earlier I'm gonna put that in here and show you the short little clip of me shooting to give you a better idea with the bow itself So in your writing, you have these people, these fantasy people, or just, you know, hunters. It, it doesn't actually have to be like Legolas. Um, they can use the bow. It could be a lot like Katniss. She uses very good form. Um, the only difference is terminology. A lot of uh, bow users have little attachments that they put on their bows. You'll see that in the video that I show you uh, that can lessen the vibrations of the string and the sound you hear from when you release because you don't hear the arrow. The arrow makes no noise. You hear the hum and the, the, the boom almost of the string itself and these little attachments lessen that. So that it doesn't, you know, throw off your target, whether it be a deer, a hog, anything. Which hogs are very hard to, you know, bead down. They blend in really well. Um, so, I suggest that if you're writing it, try doing it. That way you get a feel for what your character is going through when they do this. I did the same thing because I also collected swords and knives throughout high school. I know, I'm a weird person. Um, so, what I did when I started writing my fantasy novel, I have a long sword. It's not a broad sword, it's just a standard long sword. And I swung it around, I tried to do all the different things that I had my person doing. So, the same can be said for the bow. If you're wanting to use a compound bow, I suggest you go to any of your sports uh, warehouses like Sportsman's or uh, Bass Pro Shop. And I'm not saying go in there and, you know, fiddle around with everything and break something. But some of them have ranges where you can go and shoot. Some of them will have personnel come and help you um, get a feel for the bows. Now, not all of them have the traditional bows. 
they more cater to compound but you still get a feel for what you need to do so um yeah that, that's what i suggest i suggest you go out and get a feel for all this and it, it helps your writing a lot for you to feel what you were making your character feel that little bit of advice <laughs> only goes so far so if you get your your character shot please do not go out and try and see how it feels to be shot with anything or stabbed with anything i guess that that concludes the did you know portion next comes romantic tension oh all right so we're back for the writing advice portion which is romantic tension i'm not talking about the three letter word that a lot of people go oh, when they hear no we're not talking about sex we are talking about the tension the draw between two characters and you can build that through interactions and non-interactions actually you bring the two characters together and they either have a love-hate relationship at the beginning where one of them or both of them cannot stand the other or you have them immediately connected through some kind of commonality say you're in a coffee shop your characters are in a coffee shop and they're sitting down and this person um, goes to get a sugar packet and the other person goes to get a sugar packet and they reach for it at the same time and they touch fingers or whatever and it starts this little cutesy awkward oh I'm sorry did you need that type thing and then they just kind of start cracking jokes about sugar or coffee I don't know this is off the top of my head <laughs> it's probably extremely cliche as well but it's the first thought that I had so then they might sit two tables across kind of eye each other a little bit when the other's not looking um maybe they notice what time it is in the day that the other one's there and they don't speak the rest of the time they leave like one after the other or at the same time or one leaves along before the other one but one of them is thinking, God, I wish that person would come back. I kind of wanted to talk to them or something. The next day, they come back. And it turns out that they go to this place regularly. It's kind of a standard thing in their routine. So maybe over the next couple of days, they kind of realize this. Or maybe they don't realize this. Or maybe one of them realizes this. But either way, somehow there's a little bit of tension there. And it builds and it builds and then finally they end up sitting at the same spot maybe somebody makes a stalker joke I don't know maybe they say I oh, is how many day how much coffee do you need in a day I don't know uh anyway they're, they're talking now and so maybe they make it a daily thing to come meet at the coffee shop and chit chat but they don't do anything for the rest of the day. And then finally, one of them asks the other out. And they go on a date. And then you get that first kiss tension. The do I or do I not type thing. You stop at their front door. It's the total rom-com cliche of should I kiss you or not. Or... Um, should I let him type thing like I want to kiss him but does he all this other it's just a lot of tension so there's um there's a romantic I don't want to say comedy but there's a romance novel that I've been reading where they have the love-hate relationship but she keeps popping up she keeps popping up everywhere he goes and then finally, they end up going out. And it's actually really, 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 really cute. So, for it to be believable, there's got to be some give and take. It's, gotta, it's got to make the reader 
be like, oh my gosh, I really wish, you know, that we get together, I can see how much they like each other type thing. You don't want it to be over the top, though. Too much tension, kind of, and not enough tension. It's like, oh my gosh, that was so quick. <laughs> I mean, I wanted more. I wanted to see the relationship build. So, in that, just kind of pace yourself. Just draw a little bit off of experience. It, I, anybody has had an unrequited love. So, you have some experience in the tension. A touch here, a glance there, a brush of the hand, being really close to them but nothing happening, being put in situations like if they work together, being put on a project together, but one of them has, you know, a crush or something on the other one. So this person's just like, Ugh, the whole time waiting for the other one to make a move or waiting for the right time to make a move themselves is give and take. You want the reader to want it as much as the characters do. So that's all I have right now. We're fixing to go into our review portion. Okay, so here's the part that everyone cares about, I guess. Um, here is the review section. So today we'll be reviewing three books that I put on hold for quite a while, mainly because two of them were kind of long and the third was a bit difficult for me to read. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is Rangers of West Point book one. And while it was a really cool concept and could have, this is really difficult for me to say. The structure of it was not as well as it should have been and it made it difficult to read. It could have been, I don't know if it was Kendall's restructuring of what this person had put on there, but it smushed some dialogue together and it was a bit of a difficult read. However, it was a really cool concept, really good story. So if you can get past the structural difficulty of it, um, you will enjoy the story itself. That's, that's my honest opinion and it breaks my heart to say it because I don't know if it's going to deter anyone else from reading it. Um, maybe the author, once I get in contact with them, can fix some of these issues and make it a little easier to read. I'm not sure. But now we're going to move on to the second book, which was um, Playing Hide and Seek, an Archer novel. This one was pretty neat. It takes you back and forth between different perspectives, but they have an overall arc. And uh, they're all connected somehow. I'm not giving any spoilers away. That's why I said somehow. Um, it keeps you guessing and it, it the, the swapping around doesn't deter you from reading. It, it keeps everything separate and in its own little bubble, but while at the same time it's like a bubble within a bubble. And it, it's actually a pretty cool story. Um, the third one that we're going to be talking about is Gifts of Fire and Ice, which I thoroughly enjoyed. It's a really cool concept. It's, it was one of the longer ones. It, was, it took me a while to read because of everything else I had going on. And um, it's, it's about a brother and a sister, and they're called in to the king to... Um, be okay so the girl is the, the sister is a called a gifter and she's able to put these abilities these energies into objects and um the king calls her in to be his 
private gifter. And she takes her brother along, who is a bit of an invalid. Um, he's more sickly than anything. Um, but on their journey, the sickliness kind of goes away. <laughs> um, so, by the end of it, mm, small spoiler, it's just Serge who has to continue the journey. And I'm actually very interested in seeing how this next installment happens. But until then, I have other books to read and more videos to make for all of you. And I'm so sorry that I've had to put this on hold for so long, but I needed to take care of some things for myself as well. Um, I plan on having another video next week, fingers crossed <laughs> that it's not another three weeks away. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and y'all have a blessed day and don't forget to make a writer's day. Thank you.